fucking week. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hooms Podcast. I'm your host, George Collins. This is episode 50. Uh, am I, I'm pretending like uh, I didn't just get done recording like literally two hours ago. It was about uh, me just getting getting away from that uh, being sick and shit like that. Uh, listen to the last episode, episode 49, where I uh, go through the complications of, uh, uh, of going to the doctor for the first time in 20 years. My experience with that, um, <laughs> but today today episode is uh is an old is actually a guest that we had before. Um, you know him, you love him, Tracy Wickham. What's up, man? Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh um, shit, man. Last time he was here, we was talking about good old uh, Chris Hardwick. Oh, uh, Chris Hardwick. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he made a comeback. Yeah. Ah, phone. Of course, of course, the phone goes off. <laughs> As I'm recording, um, but yeah, he he actually made a really good comeback. We're just gonna jump right into it. Like, fuck it, you know what? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, um, just kind of like a recap. Basically, he got accused of uh, basically being a really shitty boyfriend. So, um, so, and the thing is, he didn't really, he didn't even get called out on it by the, his accuser which was his ex-girlfriend um people kind of put two and two together because she did a description of the guy instead of actually saying his name people put two and two together say it was chris hardwick and then immediately he lost all his jobs right as if he was like sexually assaulted her or something like that right so lost his job at amc the, the talking dead um all all fifty of his jobs, you know what I mean. Like he lost all of them, like like in tw- twenty four hours, there's n- nothing uh, uh, of Chris Hardwick. Even the Nerdist got rid of uh, his, uh, of uh, him on their website, which was his. I don't know. I don't really know how that worked anymore. But you get the point. He was gone. It was said and done. And but we came to his rescue. It's, I think it's, I think it was us <laughs> that saved him, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyers found our video and like these two guys are defending him. Yeah, they <laughs> he's innocent. He made clearly, the, they made all the points. <laughs> <laughs> I think they found because you know what? What was fun about that episode was I, that was actually my favorite episode to record because uh, that was the first time I was actually doing the the semi live version of it with the live oh, yeah. pictures and stuff like that. I was putting effort in. I was like. What twenty episodes ago, man? I had oh, passion I back then. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> we all had passion back then. 2018 yeah. has been a very hard kick in the dick to the world, dude. It's been fucking rough. Um, but it was fun. It was fun uh, recording. I think that's the they found that lost footage of uh of you and me joking about him being Chris Hard Dick, and uh, uh, I think they enjoy seeing Fat Chris Hardwick, seeing him in his on his last oh, time. Oh, I actually <laughs> looked that back up. I forgot that existed. Yeah, dude, that was fucking hilarious. Um, but he's back now. He's back, like we said. Um, I'm. Did you find out what uh, jobs he got back? Um, yes, I actually have them up right here. He got the uh, he got all of his talking shows back. That being uh, the Talking Dead, Talking with Chris Hardwick, Talking Preacher, and Talking Saul. He has returned to everything. See, I thought he was, is, I didn't know he had all the other shows. Shit, I, I thought it was just... Um, the yeah. other ones, I believe, take place online. They're not like the hard seller that AMC's The Walking Dead is. Right, okay, right, right. But shit, isn't like The Walking Dead over with? Wasn't it over with right around the same time that he lost the job anyway? Uh, it's not over, but it is dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, I'll see people uh, 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 spoiled the show for me. The trailer spoiled the show for me. Them killing my my what? best favorite boy. Okay. Well, let's say to us. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, don't want to know what I'm about to say. Let's uh, just skip forward like 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, put your fingers in your ears, especially if you're driving. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> um, if you don't know about this, I, I'm actually I'd be very surprised. But they killed off my best boy, Chandler Riggs, mm. and uh, the story is about him. You killed off the main character of your show. 
and now it's about Judith, which is uh, it's fine, but it's <laughs> we're in an entirely alternate universe now because not even Rick's here. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to catch me up. Who's Judith? Judith is the baby that in the comics dies at the prison, but in the show survives the prison. Hmm. It also creates a lot of issues of like, how are they not alerting every single horde when it's burp time? Right. Hmm. I don't know. I have to really watch it. I have to actually sit down. Now that I got Hulu, which if you were listening to this episode, it's not a sponsor. It sounds it's gonna sound like it, but uh I think everybody should get this uh this deal. If uh if you listen to it today, which is Saturday the twenty fourth, uh it might still be up Black Friday. It might actually go all the way up into Cyber Monday. Monday that I think about it, um, Hulu ninety nine cent a month for a year, so that's that's a good deal. Even though Hulu isn't like the the best streaming uh, uh, site, but still ninety nine cent a month for a year. That's what I mean. That you pair that with a low end Netflix, uh, HBO Go. I mean, you're paying what. Right. Honestly, about fifteen, maybe sixteen dollars a month for everything you're gonna want to watch. Yeah, might as well have it. You, you're gonna always have a dollar on your account. So <laughs> for years, unless you're like me and you go to the dollar menu a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it would be like that sometimes, man. Uh, sometimes I forget I got a dollar for like some uh, Patreon. <laughs> I'm like, Shh, God, God damn it, I needed that dollar, like. <laughs> <laughs> The I just look back at that already? four piece chicken nugget and I'm like, was it worth it? <laughs> it's not, but it was at the time. <laughs> like, God damn it. Um, shit. But I didn't really want to like stay too much on the Chris Harvey thing. Like, it, yeah, he got he got his job back and I'm proud of him. And uh, mm-hmm. it kind of just came out of nowhere because uh, uh, it was like three, four days ago. I was just like laying down. It's one of those listen to podcasts, uh, laying in the bed kind of days. Just let the day go past. Anyway, um, and it, like I just got a notification that uh, his, uh, the podcast came back up. First episode in like three months, and I thought it was dead. I thought the podcast was dead of all of them. You live there? Yeah. And um, it was the first. It was the first episode was uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. You know, from my, oh, uh, from my, uh, I'm back. Sorry, there was just a really weird interruption. Oh, can I got some. Uh, I, I, yeah, I can hear you now. I've got some. I, I'm with a, a certain internet company that loves throttling. <laughs> I'll let I'll let you guys decide what internet company that is. <laughs> I probably, probably got the same one. I got fucking shitty ass charter or. But... Oh no! It's a it's the devil of ISP. Oh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. But yeah, like like I'm, you probably didn't hear me then. Uh, I was just laying there and I got a notification that uh, uh, the Nerdist. Well, it's not the Nerdist anymore. It's the uh, ID, ID ten plus ID ten some. I should probably know oh, the name. Uh, I, I don't like the new name. <laughs> I don't like the new name of the podcast. Shit, stupid. Like ID ten T. Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, be professional about it. I'm just gonna look at my damn ID ten. Oh, it's idiot ID ten T. Yeah, it's idiot, idiot with Chris Hardwick, formerly okay, so the Nerds Podcast. So that third time was right there. ID ten T. It just sounds stupid. It don't even sound like a real name. It doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I want to view it as Chris Hardwick just kind of giving the finger to the world. Like he had an explanation back when he like first changed it, but I was like, "That's not good enough." Uh, <laughs> something about like he lost he lost the Nerdist company or something like that, or he sold it, and they uh, they slowly kicked him out or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. So, just a long story. Um, but it is really good Chris. to see. I just want to say, uh, for me, I'm really happy to see him back, just yeah. because. Chris Hardwick was an, an icon. Like for a lot of us in nerd culture, he was kind of you know like I looked up to him a lot. He was like a really good role model and just some and you know to find news like that is like oh you know come on my guy what, what are you doing here? Right. And and, and uh, shit, if it wasn't for him, I think um, I wouldn't be into trying to like figure out. Well, uh, I look. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been really into like. Uh, 
trying to figure out women's rights and all that stuff for these mm-hmm. these last few months after this situation. Like mm-hmm. like now I want to try to figure out like oh what's what's right and all that shit. Try to help out. Try to put my my two cents in to help out. But uh, he was a huge inspiration for me for technology and like getting into gaming and everything back from uh, attack uh, attack on the show attack of the show. Sorry. Right. Oh, back yeah. in the Call of Duty four days. What is, what is this, sir? Uh, What'd you find? Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Okay, you can you can start it up. Where are we starting? Yeah, you no, you you had sent me a link. Oh, is oh, that, oh, for the Black Friday death count. Is that this Friday? This uh-huh. this year alone. Oh yeah, twelve deaths, one hundred seventeen injuries. The human race is a bunch of animals. God damn. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about the the pause. You, if you don't know what I'm talking, about, we're talking about. Of course you don't. Um, uh, Tracy sent me a link as we was talking. <laughs> uh, BlackFridayDeathCount.com. You can check it out yourself. It could. It's gonna be. It's, it, well, since Black Friday is over with now, it's gonna be the same. Um, it counts how many deaths and injuries for Black Friday this year. For well, I guess for the current year. And right mm-hmm. now it's twelve deaths and one hundred and seventeen injuries. As well, if you scroll down through it, it will give you interesting articles. I say interesting if you're morbid, but of people decimating other people over stupid shit. Right. Oh, wait, wait, I'm tripping. I, I, I read that wrong there. Um, it's how many deaths altogether since Black Friday started, right? Not. Um, no, I believe these ones, the top is actually just this Black Friday. Because hmm. the articles you'll see where it shows the numbers, mm-hmm. those are uh, just pertaining to how many deaths and injuries were in this one case. Because, uh, let's see, there's one that is father charged and crashed that killed daughters after Black Friday shopping. It is two kills. Five injuries. Jesus. And then, uh, oh, here's a, let's see. Los Angeles area Black Friday pepper spray attack at Walmart injures 20. What is going on? What is, why, why is it like barely even marginally good deals come in and people are just losing their mind? Yeah, no, I feel just like, like it's popular now since it, it gets attention. That's just like these, these shootings, just like it gets attention. So it, it, it it gets the attention of certain people who yeah. really want to do it, you know? Well, uh, it's it's a glorification of things that we shouldn't be glorifying. And even yeah. though, you know, we're not going around parading the shooters, but when you're putting them on media and blasting pictures of their face and their manifestos, you're parading the shooter. Right. You're, you're saying, look, it's, crazy people, it's you have enough. something to attain. It's enough. it's enough for those people that's not getting enough mm-hmm. attention to get attention somehow, like... And, uh, let's see. Sad, also, insider secret about Black Friday coming from a retail experience. Um, everything that you're buying super cheap, these deals you're getting, you're actually getting stuff from companies that aren't even near their mainline product that you would normally buy in the store. The TVs are not, they're maybe, you're, you're getting a 55 inch TV for what, like $300. It's about maybe a hundred fifty dollar tv to put together it's the cheapest stuff yeah and people are killing them killing each other over thinking like oh you know the samsung black friday tv this is it's gonna be great they're built to die in a year right. or two so you're right back in buying another one it's a it's right. just a huge scam yeah my neighbor actually she she got on my nerves too because she know i work at a uh, walmart she was like uh, oh lord she was like hey, go, 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 give me a give me a tv i'm like one how the fuck you think I'm gonna get you just to get at you a TV just because you got the money? If you got the money, <laughs> get your ass up there. Like, yeah. Because like, uh, one thing I don't understand, like working in retail, having worked retail on Black Friday, we can't shop. Right. <laughs> like, and by the time we're done, we get the last pickings, and it, it's nothing. If, if if we do get some, we have to sneak it in, sneak it to the back, and we get mm-hmm. in trouble for it, even though technically we're gonna go buy it anyway. Like, it's still like. It's fucking sad. Um, Treat your retail slaves. Well, we we need it. I actually got I got lucky this year. Um, I worked uh, the day before Thanksgiving and and uh, actual Black Friday, mm-hmm. uh, but 
uh, Black Friday, the actual Friday of Black Friday in Walmart yeah. isn't Black Friday. Black Friday for, uh, I explained in the last episode, um, is actually 6 p.m. of Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. I actually, I was up there around 6.37 up at, the, uh, up at Walmart, and like it, it was odd. Yeah. Because of just all the people there. Like, I'm very used to Thanksgiving, you know, up until what, like, 9 o'clock? Everything's dead. There's no cars on the road. Everyone's, you know, right. having a good time. But now people, like, live at the store all day. Like, right. just completely, whatever, family, we're getting that TV tonight. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I went in for wine. <laughs> so, I, like, I had to ask them, like, hey, are you going to let me buy this right now? Right. But, um... Like, just watching people, like, st- there were people stepping over each other. Like, I was going through aisles they had blocked off, because luckily I'm super skinny and I could just slide through anything. <laughs> but, like, I'm not about to die for some fucking wine, right. but it, it was a nightmare at 6 o'clock. Man, uh, but hey, um, yeah, it wasn't, wait, which one did you go to? Did you go, like... I went to, uh, the, not our town's one, or my town. So you went to Can like, I say where I live? Like, is it safe to do that? <laughs> no, just say the city. Uh, it's over in Prattville, and okay, so that place, Pratt, Prattville is like one of those up and coming towns, yeah. and they're finally getting up to the coming part. So, <laughs> like, I'm sure where where I'm at, like, it, it was pretty slow. I'm pretty sure like the other areas around were pretty slow, but Prattville's got like too many people in a small town, and it is not equal for a good night. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. So y'all don't y'all only got that like one Walmart there. Yeah, yeah. So if, unless they they go take the the extra ten or fifteen minutes to go down to Montgomery, mm-hmm. um, they, y'all only got that one. So yeah, so that makes sense that it's gonna be chaotic. But here in Montgomery, we got three of them. If oh, you yeah. count uh, Chantilly. Uh, so um, the sort of one out, sort of one that's, that I work at. Where ours is like really calm for like the last like four years, it's been like super calm because we've been doing this six o'clock uh, Black Friday thing. I will say I will uh, this time like I I've been to like I've been Black Friday shopping myself like to the gallery uh, stuff like that out in Birmingham. Yeah. Which let me tell you that is the most terrifying experience I think you can go through outside of like going to war. What? What a mall? Yes, a mall on Black Friday. Yeah. It is just a sea of people. Every like, you're not walking. Right. You're going with the flow. Mm-hmm. Like the stores are filled, and then there's no gap between people and like the people in the store. It's literally just an ocean. You have to raise your raise your hand, and somebody will push you to that direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's my turn. Here's my here's my store. And as well, the entire time you're doing that, you're watching your back because of, you know, every all everything that the media has made Black Friday out to be, you know, this war zone. And, like, it, it's, it is really terrifying because you're in an ocean of people, you never know what's going to happen. Right. Especially this year with the, mm-hmm. with, with the mass shootings and shit like that. So. Oh, yeah. This year, like, I just, we weren't going to do anything. We were going out, like, we're, we hit some Cyber Monday deals and we're, we're good. <laughs> right. And it's, I think... I think they should they should slowly start doing that somehow, like making it more online based, which which it doesn't make it fair for the people that like work in Amazon. Mm-hmm. And you hear the conditions that in the in the Amazon warehouses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, like, but then again, I, I've seen like three. I've seen three videos in the last two months of Amazon warehouse workers fucking. It, it works so. <laughs> I also I don't know. I don't well, really they think. have what like a, a they have like a five minute bathroom break, which is timed, and you are followed to the bathroom to make sure <laughs> there is no pooping on company dime. Well, hey, they got they got enough time to fuck on the warehouse floor, so <laughs> <laughs> they got enough time, I guess. I'm just waiting for Amazon to be like. All right, we've improved things. We bought all of our workers diapers. Now they don't need a restroom. <laughs> Amazon pro- branded diapers. So oh, no. Throw it away on the way home. <laughs> we probably just created the singularity for Amazon oh. to take over the world. They're like, why didn't we think of this? <laughs> They're geniuses. Now you have to, for every diaper, they pay us 10 cents. We're going to be, hey, we're gonna be thousand, uh, thousand yeah. acres. <laughs> uh, I'll be okay. Then I'll take my royalties for ruining the world. <laughs> I just throw it on my taxes. I don't even think about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Black Friday, um, 
I got lucky because I didn't have to work it, work the actual Black Friday, mm-hmm. and I got to just sit in, get in there early. I got there at like five o'clock, and I grabbed a uh, uh, Monster Hunter World for twelve dollars. Oh, yes. I spent way uh, too much time on that game. Yeah, that didn't that, that came out like in the beginning of this year, so. Yeah, it came out. I want to say it was February, maybe a little bit after. Yeah, I think it was like late January or something like that. Yeah, that game was. That game is liquid cocaine. And sp- like, and speaking of which, uh, the other thing that I got, which w- that could answer our question of when uh, Monster Hunter came out, uh, uh, hey Google, when did Monster Hunter World come out? Oh, she's going in. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a, a Google Mini Home, so for, oh, dude. for twenty five dollars. I want to put uh, those in every room of my house. Yeah, just for because like I'm a super forgetful person, and I like I have a problem creating any form of a routine and having something where I can just be like, remind me to be a person today. Right. It's <laughs> and it'll, you know, it'll it'll do that. And as well, they're really I don't know when they're releasing it, but they do have that AI update which will allow it to like call for you, like for a doctor's appointments, ordering food, yeah. and it's apparently indistinguishable from a human. If you haven't heard about this, definitely go check it out. Um, just look up uh, the Google updated AI. I, I think you should be able to find it off that. Yeah. Um, it's just really interesting. It's kind of scary because it starts bringing in that like, oh, are we just going to stop talking to everybody and we'll all be done by AI? And we'll yeah. be in, like, it, it, it's a little dystopian creepy, but I like it. And be like, hey, Google, could you poop for me? No, no Google, no, don't listen. Stop. Stop listening. <laughs> stop. Stop. And- okay, Google, stop. <laughs> stop. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. <laughs> God. Um, but, uh, One okay. of the complaints I do see about like the Google Homes, and I've seen this on TVs, too. I've seen it on everything. Uh, working retail because I work electronics yeah. and everyone thinks you know that everything is stealing their information and listening to them mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you yes everything does listen yeah. but here's three things to go by are you a terrorist are you like diddling kids or are you doing something you're not supposed to right. you're not any of those three right. who cares well, right. what, do you, what, is, what do you lose all you 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 gain advertisements that you actually want to see, right? Versus like I'm popping on, and you know, let, let's just say like Club Penguin comes out. I don't want to see that. Now that I'm in the in the middle of Tracy, I'm not really sure. Like to a point, I would like stuff um, advertised towards me that I like just happen to talk about, and it reminds yeah. me, like say if I'm talking about life insurance, like with my sister or something. Yeah, like, and then, like, you go on Facebook it. or something. Yeah, and then, it's then like... it pops up, like, a week later. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot to go get it. That That's cool, but some sometimes I don't even be near, like, my phone or, or something like that, and then I get advertised for, like, socks or some shit that I was just thinking about. I'm like, that, no, that shit's creepy. Like, <laughs> like don't don't dig that damn deep. Some, some things you don't um, need to advertise to me. There is, this is a conspiracy theory, but I really love getting into these. Uh, they're saying that it's being created, but a lot of people already believe that it's created now, and we're just kind of being introduced to it as a, hey, are you really okay with this? Like, do we need to bend some stuff? But, um, basically, and this is conspiracy, let me reiterate, that they have, like, profiles on us, on our voice, on our face, like, think with the new Apple phones, your laptops with the cameras, to where anywhere in the world, like, even if, let's say I leave my phone at home, I have nothing on me, out, you know, like, unless you're out in the fucking woods by yourself, they know it's you. They can hear you. And this is tied to your Facebook. This is tied, like, there's no reason that they wouldn't be able to integrate all of that into a database. Right. So, I mean, are we ever really alone anymore? Unless you, unless you pull every cord, unless you take, you just forsake technology outside of, like, maybe early, you know, the early 2000s, early 90s type deals, you're always being listened to. Now, do they have the profiles on you? We don't know, but it's a scary thing to think about, and we do know it is coming. I mean, we're we're so deep into it now that 
people complain about it. Oh, I don't want to be listened to. I don't want to be profiled, all this stuff. But if it just were to disappear, like, uh, what was a, like it could have a dramatic effect on us to the point where, like, we might have actually needed it, you know? Like, I like to view it as a nice safety blanket. Right. Because for me, even if, even if it's not stopping anything, so I believe, like, there's some people that are like, oh, it's only ever stopped one bombing, blah, blah, blah. But I do believe once it gets to a point where we can use some of this stuff in court on the higher end level, like I said, the first three type deals. Right. Because you do have a right to the privacy of your information. But I, I believe in the safety blanket of I don't do anything wrong. I don't really need to worry. And I don't mean that in the form of like, oh, I'm an upright 100% citizen, you know, like yeah. I speed, I, I, I mess up. I, I'm, an, I'm a human yeah. being. But, you're but not, I, you're not I'm not a threat to the state. You know? I'm not a threat to children. I'm not a threat to people around me. Yeah, right. Like if that's where, like I do believe, you know, having something that can alert like, oh, this guy just, you know, is a pedophile. Like, it, you know, it's not just flagging you because you're like, oh, I made a, I made a joke about it. Right. But when it's like, hey, we have, information on him and we have uh from his profile that's linked to, uh, to all of his computers we have proof that it's on there too because we looked into it right i would be happy i'd be like awesome this is a good this is something that we need in place without right. it we're you know like, we're yeah. what eight billion people with no one watching right like some people have like uh going like the pedophile thing like some people might have an app or something duh, since they live since they have kids to warn mm-hmm. them of unregistered yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I guess you could say like that could come into an area of very black mirror. Uh, if anyone knows the episode, it is with John Hamm on the Christmas episode. I, I want to say it's season, the end of season two. Mm. Okay. I can't remember the exact name of it. Uh, you can always is check it, with Google, but. Was it the one with like in a, in a cabin or something like that? Uh, they were in, uh, first they were in like a bunker. And it's like, oh, they're like criminals or whatever, and they're put out there to, I guess, monitor stuff because they're like, we're not going to put normal people out there. The world sucks. Yeah. But then, like, it goes deeper, and you're just like, oh no, but like, the, like, they're not in reality. A bunch of stuff goes by. Oh. But yeah. you're able to block people, or like, if you're a pedophile or if you've done something wrong, it'll, you will be blocked from everybody because like he gets released at the end, and. uh you know, he's walking around and it's just he can't talk to anyone. And for him, oh, when, he like, shows up as red and like completely blocked out for other people. So they know like this guy did this thing. Right. Like it's all color coded and it's that's that's where I think it gets terrifying because it's yeah, if you do creepy. make a mistake in life. So I don't believe that, you know, no one can come back. There are people who can't. But was it at the same episode where it's like uh he was married to somebody and they got divorced so she kinda like blocked them? So he couldn't talk to his own child or something like that. Yeah, yeah, See, that wasn't the same. Episode. That's <laughs> that is no, that's it. It was very scary, and because it's not really a far off concept. Yeah, especially with the profiling stuff going on now, and also the push into what VR and augmented reality. Mm-hmm. Like, are we going to you know are we going to live Scarlet Letter? Like, is this just going to be our future? I, I really hope not, but I, I would say it's on the people, but we got to stand and tell them, like, you know, where the line is drawn sooner yeah. or later. Right. Hey, but okay, let's let's not do too much of but, a... Let's... Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not, I definitely don't want to rail anyone. Like I yeah. said, conspiracy oh, theories are fun. I like to go in on them, and I like to kind of get that... Right. The high of being like, yeah, we could stop this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, any games you was uh, pretty excited about? Super Smash Brothers. Mm. I'm ready. December 7th, you will catch me on there all day, every day. Oh, shit. Now I think about it, dude. What? It's like the 20th of November? It's like a, a couple of weeks. God damn it. Oh, yeah. You know what? Because I had just sold my Switch. No. <laughs> look, cause, look. Okay, look. <laughs> it was like a year ago. I had, yeah. I had sold my PS4 to get to get on that Nintendo Switch hype because I was all excited about it and shit. And they, didn't, they weren't releasing anything Dude, for the longest they, time. They, have, they, they library is fucking shit. Yeah. Like, I did the same thing because all like I, I didn't get to play the Mario game. I didn't want to do that, but you know I got Legend of Zelda, which that satiated me for a while. Yeah. And then I got a, uh, 
I got like Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2, but I've already played those. I just kind of got them as like a, I'll come back to them. Yeah. But where we're at now, we do finally have a decent library of games. Um, I will also say one of the gems that I found, uh, if you're on the fence about it, definitely do it. Diablo 3. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I've been a long time Diablo 3 player on PC and the difference is actually for the better you act uh you gain a dodge roll which is very weird it's very useful mm -hmm. but uh just how the ability uh how the you know you do your abilities to the controls it feels a lot better than the computer and as well like i can sit down and play with my girlfriend and she doesn't also have to buy diablo 3 and have another computer like we can just sit in front of the same tv mm -hmm. and we're able to play which everyone's been able to do you know since the xbox since the ps4 when it released but here's the kicker it's portable it's portable Diablo 3. Right. It's yeah, that's... everything you want in your loot grind wherever you want. And that is, look, that is a good sale. The whole system is portable. But I, 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 it's my fault. I didn't really think about it when I when I sold the PS4 for the yeah. Nintendo Switch. I'm not a portable guy. I'm not portable. Yeah. <laughs> like, because I'll take it out sometimes. I took it out a few yeah. times. But at the same time, I'll play it for like five minutes. But then I'll be looking around and shit, and, then, and I'll put it back in my little carrying case. I'm and, definitely the same way. So like, like, it's not as portable as I wanted to. Plus, my narcolepsy is getting worse. Oh, yeah. My narcolepsy is getting fucking worse. I haven't dropped it. I haven't dropped the Switch itself, but I've, I've dropped uh, uh, some of the, the cheaper uh, pro controllers and mm -hmm. broke them because I, I was dropping the damn controllers. Uh, uh, now I remember playing Fortnite a few times with you, just in the middle of a match, and we just start hearing snoring. We're like George, George, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be able to fall asleep like right in the middle of a, of a fight too. Like we'd be building up know. and everything. And all of a sudden, no, it's not during the fight. I don't, I don't fall asleep during the fight. I know it'd be like when trying to wait for them damn load times and waiting for us to uh, <laughs> uh, to jump off the bus. I, I, I'll fall asleep then. I ain't gonna even lie, man. <laughs> Especially been playing for a few hours and shit. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. And then, uh, I will say on the portability side, I view it as portable for vacations, for like a long doctor's office. Especially like, you know, I, I end up going to the doctor a good bit, and you know, you're gonna sit there for an hour or two. When yeah. I do that, I bring it with me. Just I'm like, I I don't want to sit here and you know. Give the opportunity for someone to sit next to me and just be like, hey, do you like to watch people peel their scabs? And be like, oh, no thank you, sir. No, I'm good. But uh, it works perfectly for that, and especially the vacation, because you don't have to be able to hook it into a TV. And honestly, like Mario Kart on it, I didn't think I would like you know, a split-screen feature on a screen that small, but it's really not bothersome if you're used to like, you know, your phone and an iPad mini. Right. You go over to that, it's pretty nice. Like you still have really the full range of color. Once you if you put it on a four K TV, it is not four K, but it does upscale beautifully. Okay. Yeah. I think I played a few to a few rounds over in uh at GT South. But I never bought the the game itself. Um the only games I had on the Switch was uh that I actually enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, was uh Skyrim. And, oh yeah. Uh, Skyrim and um Mm, I tried to get back into it, but the 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 Stardew Valley. I get in and out of that game. Yeah. Also, for me, games like that, I get a little bit unhealthy with, just yeah. because I'll be like, "All right, we're gonna play for an hour." Oh my god, it's six in the morning. Right. Like when that, when that game first came out, now and I had bought it on PC. That was like one of the few games that my PC can actually play. Yeah. Uh, I put I put like good seventy eighty hours in. Oh yeah, and it it it's one of those games similar to it. It has the Animal Crossing curse with me. Is I'll yeah. play forever, but if I stop playing, it's done. It's it's done. I can't go back to yeah. it. Yeah. Speaking of Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing 2019 Nintendo Switch don't, baby, we don't, got it. Don't it's gonna me. happen. Don't remind it's gonna me. It's gonna happen. I'm don't, so I'm so no, I'm so stop. Sorry, I'm on stop. the train, I'm ready for Rover to ask me who I am. Let's go. <laughs> no, stop it, because I, I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> like, I really need Nintendo to give me, like, a little IV bag. I don't care about anything else. Just throw <sighs> Animal Crossing in that IV. I just want to know what I'm doing. Right. I don't care. I don't need pictures. Just, just give me my Animal Crossing right. info. Well, that... I forgot. I completely forgot that 
they said something about it, but they only said the, the year. So I don't know. Yeah. That's how they put too much effort in. It's mostly because of um, the Animal Crossing that came out on the mobile. Like, yeah. Uh, was, well, there's, there's I was actually super very excited about that, man. But uh, what they do for those mobile games, if you actually go back and check, is uh, let's say the Fire Emblem Heroes game, which is great, by the way, if you have money. Uh, it's a game you can play for free, but you're not really going to get too far. So you do want to be a mobile gamer, kind of true through, if you're going to play. Like, I don't really, I don't spend money on mobile games, so it's kind of a game I fell out of, but it does have a really fun campaign. Right. Uh, but what they do, they'll release that, and then it's to get you hype for the series. Because they then released the, uh, what was it, Fire Emblem, uh, oh, what is it, it's like the Kingdoms at War game. I can't think of the actual name now. Legend of Zelda's got another one. Hmm. Uh, uh, Dynasty Warriors, I think, is oh, like. Oh yeah. I can't remember the exact brand that they put on them, but um, it's Dynasty Warriors mm-hmm. with Nintendo, and yeah, they released the name of it too. Oh, uh, Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, I think it's also Fire Emblem Warriors. It okay. Probably is. Okay. But uh, for Fire Emblem Warriors, they didn't think it was going to do well, so they made an app. The app did amazing because people were like, oh, I get to just have all of my favorite characters and make them fight for me and teams that I get to pick. Cool. Hmm. But uh, And you can pretty much do the same thing in Fire Emblem Warriors, but you're actually getting a, you know, you're getting to play as them. It's not just going on the board and having your strategy game. It's a dungeon running simulator. Right. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, for Super Mario Odyssey, they had that Super Mario, Super Mario, <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario uh, Jump Game, yeah. which was yeah. well received about that and well hated at the same time. It was a beautiful thing. Right. It's a it's, but, a, um, it's, a, it's a well-made game. It's just yeah. It's not for everybody. You, there was like the there is a paywall because you can you can only go so far and you have to buy the rest of the levels. But yeah. eh, I guess it's it's better than a bunch of hidden purchases, you know, right. or cosmetic crap. They put it out there but, in the um, beginning and let you know so. And with that, you know, everyone's like, oh, you know, Mario, 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 Mario. We were seeing Mario memes come back. You know, everything was kind of jumping back into Mario. Right. Shortly after, they announced Mario Odyssey, and everyone lost their mind because it's like, here's a subpar thing that'll just get you hooked on the thought of the game. Right. Now here's your crack. Right. Like, Man. and then uh, they did the same thing with Animal Crossing because uh, the, the apps are really just there to test the waters on is this going to be a good idea for us to follow into because we all have to think after the colossal fail they endured with the nintendo wii u i i wouldn't be surprised if certain ips didn't come back because they were too worried but taking a safe step into a mobile market where they're gonna make money regardless if it you know doesn't pan out right they're still they're still winning in the end and i like to see nintendo win i like to see nintendo Back on back being on top, man. They're the only people that's actually trying something like really new. So I like to see what what new features come with the the new Animal Crossing. But, well, there's also uh, rumors about PSX. We might be getting info about the PS5 finally. Uh, I think I still think it's too soon, man. Like damn, I don't, I don't know because uh, like, the E3 for Sony this year was a joke. So <laughs> there's there's a chance. Didn't they skip this year? Did I? Did they pull out of this year's E3? Yeah. I, I think I. I swore they did something for a. Uh, they did like a very. It wasn't like a Sony Sony show. Yeah. They, they they had a presence, but it wasn't like. It was almost to the level of the Diablo fail with Blizzard, but no, you know, not to the scale of people booing them off stage. Apparently, for the people there, wow. it was great. Why are but people watching not it, liking the mobile Diablo? Um. I I actually stand on the side of not liking it on the form of Blizzard has turned into Activision. I'm a... I played Diablo 1. I played Diablo 2. I played World of Warcraft back in Burning Crusade. I was in the... You know, I came in right at the beginning of Hearthstone. Starcraft was, you know, a nightly thing for me. And to, to go from that company that rewarded you in a hardcore experience to where I did this, so I earned this, right. to, you know... This it, World of Warcraft is now chores simulator. The fight, you know, they're like, oh, but there's mythic dungeon pluses for you to try to get leaderboards on. They're not hmm. fun. They're okay. the see. wrong kind of grind. And then for Diablo, Diablo three when it came out, which I was also day one on, we didn't get to play for the first two weeks. Right. And then this, 
the story compared to the others wasn't as good, which that's subjective. Other people will like it. I, I didn't really personally like it just because I thought it was very, it was too easy to see all the tropes in, like mm-hmm. what was going to happen. And then the game was just garbage for about three years. And then they added in the adventure thing and the rifting and grifting and that, that turned it around to where it's like, all right, this, this it's a dungeon runner and it, it works. Right. People wanted something on the computer because of, for the Diablo community, we have been pretty hardcore just dismissed by Blizzard. Like our last content update was what, two years ago with, um, oh, what was it? The Necromancer. Now they're, they're adding in content updates, but it's like, hey, there's a new monster for you to kill and a new one zone to go to. Why don't you have a team dedicated to Diablo? Why don't you have a team dedicated to making sure Diablo 3 is running and, you know, throw some cosmetics on there for me to buy. Like, I will buy them, but you're not giving me a reason to want to. And you say the teams thing, they they could secretly be having the same issues that Telltale was having. Um, apparently they are. There's a mass exodus. It's not an issue of, uh, well, it's an issue of pay, but there's a mass exodus happening from Blizzard right now. Yeah. And it's because Blizzard got rid of their employee share profit. Which basically means, you know, like no what you work on, if it succeeds, you're going to get some Ugh. better money and a lower, like you're a lower end developer. That, that's that good. That kill a lot of people morale. Like, fuck. Yeah, what? you're having a lot of people who were getting good money for their work, for their hard work. And right. Blizzard is not a company you just, you can be, you know, a bottom of the line developer, fresh out of like, you know, ITT tech and walk into. Right. They're... They were known as a very prestigious company. You know, they did bring in some people that were kind of like midway, but they turned those people into some of the best artists and, you know, game developers, game designers, etc., in the industry, which is what made them so powerful. And now Activision has just fled its roots all the way through. We have lost all of the people that made Blizzard what Blizzard was, Man. which were your head developers like Chris Metzen. But yeah. shit, I, th- I think every- I think this is just this is just an you know, an error, uh, not an error, e r r o r like error. Mm-hmm. It's a a stage. I, it's a yeah. stage of like the, all the companies are going through this a little bit. I've uh, noticed it, yeah. Even um, even Bethes- Bethesda a little bit again. Oh, uh, Bethesda, Oof. especially now with the whole with the release of uh, which is the reason why I resold my f- switch f- for. Fallout seventy six. So, oh no. Um no. so you wanna talk about that for a minute? Um before I go in on it, what do you think about Fallout seventy six? Like from because you've actually been able to get a hands on yeah. what what have you experienced? Um Okay if, if say okay, let's say if this was like the first two days that I had got it, I'd say no, this it's it kinda sucks. Kinda sucks 'cause um because of those patches, man. Those fucking patches. And like, uh, I thought I had... Pre- you mean the, the 30, the 47 gigabyte patches? The first... Well, yeah, of course. The first... Uh, when you first initially get the game, you have to download yeah. the giant one. But then the the, the 40... It was a 47 gigabyte mm-hmm. one, like, uh, update patch a day after that. I was like... Apparently, that was a full update on the... Pretty much most of the game. Yeah. I don't know. I'm actually going to go and check if you want to talk for a minute about your experiences and see what that update actually included. I mean, basically, if, like I said, if you would have asked me those first two days, I'm like, shit, it sucks because I haven't ever played a goddamn game. Because <laughs> I thought I had pretty good internet, uh, pretty fast internet, that is. Um, I try to sleep on it and everything. Uh, 100, 100, 100 gigabytes, um, something like that, with uh, Charter. And it still took six, seven hours to download each each patch. So, mm-hmm. what, what is that? 14, 15 well, hours. Also, of, God forbid you have, you have da- uh, data metering because if they're tracking your data and then they're going to cut it off at a certain point, this is not something developers need to be doing. Right. Because that basically says, "Oh, thank you for buying our game. Sorry that you only have 200 gigabytes of metered connection. You're not playing this month. So you bought a game that's online only." That now you can no longer play. Oh, that's fucking that's dumb. Without paying, you know, more money to your ISP, which mm. all of it's bullshit. Like if you if you want to escape it, sometimes it really is worth the money just to go for the unlimited 
their highest package. Yeah. Honestly, that's what I do because I thought I, I, mean, yeah, I, I thought I did. I thought I had it with Charter. It was pretty fast until just trying to download this uh giant patch and have still having to wait. Basic for both of them together, a total of about fifteen hours before oh, yeah. I was actually able to get in there and play the game. And when I first started playing, um, of course, you, I'm I'm taking my time. I'm a slow Fallout player, you know. I'm a, I you're, like you're enjoying at, the scenery. You're the whole the, the Bethesda experience of what we're trained to do in their games. Right. So, in the beginning, you you kind of have to go just go fast and just get out of the the vault. <laughs> Because there's no story yeah. in the vault, so you just get out of there. Because if you get you get kicked out of the server while you're in the vault, you have to recreate your character, oh, like God. Dad, redo that, re listen listen to those little storylines, pick up the mm-hmm. items, all that stuff. Which now think about it, that's why I started out messed up because the first time I played, first very first time, played got the character, got out my room, and as you're leaving, you see uh, Mr. Handy's the handyman robot um mm-hmm. at like certain spots that he'll give you like uh stem packs and uh raid away and all that stuff but the second time yeah. around after they it kicked me out the server and I had to redo it all over again i kind of ran past all of them just so, <laughs> so i could hurry up and get out and get an auto save outside of the vault yeah yeah so uh it's no I... it's no I... manual save that's why i don't like um which, I mean, could easily be remedied with something that they promise, but you won't have for a year, which is odd. But uh, the private servers. Yeah. You'll have that in a year. I'm, I'm sorry. That's that's something that should be with the game. Yeah. Like, I understand if it's not finished, but just say it's not finished. Right. Just say that there was an issue making it, making the private servers. Right. We're going to be fine with that. Be transparent with us. Right. And because that I'm just gonna say all the bad stuff that I can see right away. Because I do like the game still. Like especially now, like today. I finally was able I went on Facebook and I found uh, uh Fallout seventy six play PS four mm-hmm. group and I found like two, three other players and we were just yeah. kinda like shitting farting around the map and um we didn't get really much done, but it was fun having other people there while we like kill kill monsters and and find loot and shit like that. But um uh but the bad because it's multiplayer, because it's constantly <laughs> online, um sh- man, I I don't know if it's their fault or you could be your internet or whatever, but you're the game crashed on me twice today by itself, even though this is by the, yeah. only, ga- the only day that I actually enjoyed myself playing. Cause of- I will say it is the game. Yeah. It, it's a very huge problem right now, and a lot of people are upset. You can go to the Reddits, and it is pretty much the entire page, unless the moderators have started cleaning it up. Yeah. So all I, all I do when it crashed, I, I, let, let, I send the recorded version of it and send it to them. Because it'll just crash at random times. There's nothing that caused it. Um, but yeah, it crashed about a total of three times the whole time I've been playing all together. Mm-hmm. But, um, but the good overall, it's still a pre- uh, it's still a Fallout experience. It's not it's not like a single player one. So you have to be kind of it's, it's be- kind of like a uh, the way I've seen it is like a kind of a Diablo Fallout experience. Because, like, while Diablo has a story, let's just say the adventure mode. Yeah. Um, you're, there's no story. There's just stuff to kill, which can be fun. That there's not That's not bad. Yeah. Um, my problem with it was that's... I, I feel like it's along the same lines of what why the Diablo thing failed. And I think this might have been part of the reason that they received the backlash they did is because companies have started doing this. And it's... You know, they, they start getting you hyped for their for their conference, and then you go there, and it's fine, like to be like, "Oh, here's Fallout 76," but we're not there for that. We're there for your big titles. Right. Well, Fallout 76 is not a big title. Fallout 76 is a spinoff of the Fallout series. Right. It's the it's the new New Vegas version of this generation. So. 
in a way. Which also upsets me because I would like as, as well as all true Fallout fans, I would say we were we were looking forward to Obsidian getting a getting hands on and giving us another great Fallout game because Fallout uh, New Vegas was it was amazing. Fallout Four was good in its own right, but it did fall off a lot in the story with how. It was very illusion of choice. I feel like I fell into the Mass Effect problem uh, with Mass Effect 3 at the end where, well, everything you did didn't matter anyways. Yeah. I th- um, to fix this, I think this could this game could have been just as fine even if it was a smaller game if they would have mm-hmm. just left it single player. Like, like it's cool that they try to like, experiment, yeah. but they tried it with Elder Scrolls and they mm-hmm. like kind of half assed on that one. Like, not everybody I, liked that one. So I think they should have like just kind of mirrored it. Just it's basically just saw it as the same game. They're basically the Elder Scrolls and uh, the Fallout series is is the same game. If you think of uh, well, well, yeah, I definitely agree on that. They're both the same game. The only thing you have different are your textures and what you're killing. Yeah, textures and what you're killing, and I, I guess the it's sometimes the story is roughly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the world's in trouble, but whatever. But they could they could have just saw how uh, um, Elder Scrolls uh, how that how that did and just left Fallout alone and just made another. If they was gonna release another Fallout well, game, they, well, if they did, if they had gone that way, you also have to think Zenimax currently still has Elder Scrolls Online going. Yeah, and you don't want to one Zenimax is a parent company, but that's so you're not gonna create competition between yourself. Right, and that would be seen as a major competition because let's say uh, Fallout seventy six came out as like Elder Scrolls Freelands or something. I don't know. Right. I'm not a gamer, but um, you know, you you just you, it's Skyrim controls. You're just out in the world, have fun with friends. Yeah, everybody would love it. Build strongholds. That's something I'm I am excited for. Sky, uh, Skyrim six, the Elder Scrolls six is I'm hoping to see the settlement come over because I love the settlement system. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people loved it. But, I think it was good, especially modded. But didn't they, but, um, didn't they just release um, um, a Morrowind online? Like the, the the patch, well, not patch, but like a DLC for Elder Scrolls online? Um, I believe it was a mod that does it, and... They got the go ahead to do so because it had been worked on before. There was like there's there was one that was built for Skyrim, that one got stopped, which led a lot of people believing, oh, you know, Bethesda's working on their own co-op Skyrim patch or something. It's yeah. not that Bethesda, Bethesda just takes down anything fun. <laughs> no, but um, they allowed a team to actually go ahead and you know do it, but it was with Morrowind, and I feel like they feel safe on Morrowind because I don't. It's what five dollars when it's not on sale. Yeah. And for five dollars, if you have not played Morrowind, get that. Don't care about the graphics. You will have the one of the best gaming experiences you can have for an RPG. Oh, you're talking about the the original one, not the online. Yeah. Well, even online, if you have a friend, bring them along. It's going to be twice as fun. The world is with how you you move slow, so the world is very large. Right. <laughs> And I would love to have had all the memories I had on that game, but with a friend by my side. So yeah. definitely, if you have not played, go and play it online. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I'm I'm not gonna give up on it. On on seventy on Fallout. I get, I get you. I, I I will definitely preface uh, my views on it here. Uh, it's it's a Bethesda game. Yeah. I've never seen a Bethesda game come out on launch and be good. Yeah. <laughs> we stay. <laughs> Because we know it will be, and we also know once the modding community gets their hands on the game, we can make our game whatever we want. You want Skyrim with guns? You can have that. Right. Don't play Far Cry 3. <laughs> well, well, like, okay, it's, it's only been a week since it's, like, on the yeah. 14th. So this, about... this could come out to be a very good game. My problems are they, they're they not competing with anything. There's not a, really a reason for the game to exist outside of its, its fallout. It's online. You can kill stuff together, and it's like, but there's no story, which is for me like a bit, a huge thing. I think is, they should have made that an option, though. They should have like made a really small, really small like second hand second hand story, like Fallout mm-hmm. seventy six in West Virginia. But... Well, I, I think they could have made it really good as well because this retcons a lot of stuff and makes everything really weird. 
just with the setting and everything. I think it would have done better just to be like a a Brotherhood of Steel thing. Yeah. Like give us a full Brotherhood of Steel experience that allows a story easily yeah. and to then, where then you can add the multiplayer later, like as like later, so if you want to just add some people to come, kind of like a, yeah. a, a Borderlands kind of kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been perfect. People would have loved that, even if the online was there to begin with, and there were other people in the world. Yeah. That would have sold very well. My problem with it is it's a lot of people say you know oh it's not a Rust clone. It is. It is exactly what Rust is with a few new features, but they watered it down. Hmm. It doesn't compete. It's not innovative. There's nothing new. It's selling solely off of it being Fallout. I think Bethesda really overestimated how fans would react to it. Right. And then, um, um, shit. I got I got spoiled of the ending of uh, of seventy six, which mm. I don't because how slow I'm playing the game. I won't see the ending for a very long time. Unless, so there's an ending to the game. Yeah, to uh, to the the main storyline. Okay. So, do you want? Do you want to hear it? Yeah, spoiler alert. Well, because uh, I don't know much about it. I just seen like a picture and people complain about it in like meme form. Uh, yeah. So spoiler alert. Blah blah blah. Da da da. da, da, da. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, how I seen it was again in meme form. Uh, people was like, "This motherfucker Todd made <laughs> made the ending of Fallout seventy six where you fight a, a, a radiated dragon." So the I'm Storch like, Beast, or is it an actual dragon? Yeah. I'm gonna look that up again. Again, I didn't look. I didn't like stay on it because I didn't want to get spoiled too much of it. But like, um, even if it is, even if what pe people call people calling it a dragon, they might be getting it mixed. Oh up, no! Getting it mixed up with is it that bat? Is it the bat? Thing? Yes, it's the, it's the Scorch Beast, and this is very interesting because it's the same problem I uh, a lot of us in the community had with Fallout Four. No, the no, 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 check this out. No, check this yeah. out. Because uh, the Scorch, if it, it's actually the Scorch Beast then, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was in the trailer. Uh huh? That was in the trailer. People already knew yeah. that. Like, why not give us something unique, like, you know, a surprise? Yeah, that's why it's a, it's a bat. That's what was different about yeah. it. Yeah. And, but with this, it's the same thing. Uh, This is very bad of them. It's literally the dragons from Skyrim. It was the same thing with the vertebrates in Fallout 4. They didn't create something new to use it. They are just pasting a mesh and texture over an already existing AI package. Hey, if it's if it ain't broke, well, it was it is kind of broke. <laughs> it, well, I, I I definitely agree that if it ain't if it's not broke, don't fix it. But you're in video games. Yeah. You're competing with other companies, and it seems like the companies have stopped competing, and they're just making like they're just making the same game. Patting each other on the back, because then you're like, "Oh, my my Call of Duty company like the other Call of Duty company. I'll yeah. buy it." And that just it, it's just I I get like on a marketing level like, "Oh, it benefits all the companies," but let's I, I want to see competition again. I want to I want to have a reason to not buy, you know, Infinity Ward's Call of Duty over a different Call of Duty. Yeah. However, Treyarch did really come out of the gate with Black Ops Four. That shit is beautiful. <laughs> I am happy to finally see a good entry in the series again. Oh, but uh, I have I was thinking about getting that. It was between uh, uh, Hitman Two, Fallout Seventy Six, oh, or Call of Duty. So I really want to play Hitman Two, yeah. but I, I I'm hype for Call of Duty. I won't be able to play it for a while, but when I get it, I'm gonna be so happy. Right. I played a lot of Black Ops Two. Like I I got out of all the other companies around Modern Warfare Three. Right. Because uh, they they had that third company come on Sledgehammer. Ugh. Yeah. I I was that was the same time as Titanfall. And uh, I, I was very much on the Titanfall train, and I was like, "That's just Titanfall with more restrictions right. for the Call of Duty game." You thought you thought you thought Titanfall was gonna be the future, huh? Future. Uh, Titan, Titanfall is a was a hidden gem, and it failed because people were like, "There's not enough cosmetics. I can't paint my Titan pink." <laughs> and I was just like, "But the gunplay. There's not enough guns to unlock because the guns we have are enough." Right. We don't need 30 guns. Call of Duty does it because those guns are real. Yeah. Oh. They're having to create fantasy guns. Oh, one thing, one problem I do have, another problem yeah. I do have with a uh, 76, it happened like really right before I logged off. Uh, I finally found my crew and stuff like that. And we're like a, a mixed group of people. Um, mm -hmm. One dude was level six. I was level 12. One was 14 and one was uh, 31. Yeah. Um, 
So we're like mixed up, whatever. And it goes, of course, all the all the monsters are uh, goes to the highest person. So it yeah. kind of like matches the highest dude. So we're fighting a bunch of high level high level monsters, which isn't a problem because you level up faster. Um, the problem is um, when you find other people that uh, that that want to fight you, they want to mm-hmm. PVP against you. Um, that's higher than you. It's no, it's no way you're gonna win. It's like it's yeah, that uh, unless you I got just, like a, a certain certain amount of weapons. Like yeah. it's 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 no way that you can win or get your revenge. That's the full problem I have with the game is the PvP experience. Yeah, because I feel with what they gave us, it shouldn't have been. Right. Because it's not. That's where I say it, it became a rust cloak. Without it, it would have been a good four-player experience for you and your friends, and you can have more people on there, but it's, you know, you, everybody versus the AI. They yeah. could have created something memorable with just that. Right. But they and... tried to throw in PvP, which originally was, you know, you're out in the waste, you can just die. Right. And that's great. And that's something I like. What they turned it into was the whole, you know, you, you can be shot, but you have to shoot back to fully accept the fight. They can still kill you. But you have to, you know, it, it, it just draws things out for, you know, when you do have these high-level players where you're not going to win. Right. Like, so now you just have to take your death slower instead of just pop, you're dead. Right. You, And that was the problem, too. All four of us, we was all getting one shot killed by this dude when we was trying to take over this, like, one little house, this little, little warehouse. And he was, like, he was, like, fucking trolling us and shit. So, yeah. I think they just need to remove the system for PvP and just let people kill each other. Yeah. It's like, yes, you're going to have trolls. Yes, you're going to have creepers. But for these kind of games, if that's what if you're selling it with PvP, that's what the main audience is. You don't really have an audience for, oh, I could get away, but also I'm probably still just... It just makes my death longer. Yeah. they may, uh, Or at least if... um. Like say if a person is a lot higher than you, like I was, yeah. I was twelve, thirteen, and the dude was thirty five. He the one who shot first. Mm-hmm. Um, they got to make some type of like weird balancing trait, like yeah. all the guns do the same amount of damage type thing, or uh, or which my, we'll probably my guns will more... see a balance patch in the coming weeks. It's right. something that's like, pretty normal for them, right? Some, it's something like that, like the so like they won't one shot kill me and then like. Now I get the same consequences as if I attacked him or something like that, and that was the problem. So because after I die, I drop you. You don't drop like your guns or anything like that. You drop your junk, and yeah. your junk is the stuff that you need to like the the the, the, the basically live around the, the wasteland to make it worth killing somebody. Right. So he'll kill us a few times. He basically stole all of our like screws and. Yeah. <laughs> It, it it just got annoying. It's kind of like through the 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 morale of our whole group, and we just kind of like disband after that. I would like to see a change in the form of casual and hardcore servers. Yeah, because I think that's a big problem that companies aren't understanding that the casual and hardcore player bases are vastly different in want. Yeah, I'm on the hardcore side where please give me a game that I have to spend a lot of time playing. Because for me, it's therapeutic to yeah. play games like World of Warcraft when it's hard. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it helps me just have little minor things that make me feel like I did something. But, uh... Oh, where was I going? Um, sorry, I this happens sometimes. I just completely yeah. lost my uh, track of mine. <laughs> uh, what, what was I saying? Shit. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Um. Oh you god! Like you being hard. You like being doing hardcore. Uh, you like playing uh... the, the the casual and hardcore audience. I am so sorry about that. I have mind blips. Uh, for the casual audience, this game is good, but I think it would have been better without PvP for them. Yeah, because you you have that market that's just in it to play with their friends. They don't care about that. They you know they don't want anyone else. Maybe, you know, even have other people, but like I said, it's everyone against the AI, so you feel camaraderie ship with strangers. A lot they of casual need, players are more into that. They need to Whereas, go, they need to team up with the Borderlands people. That's what they need mm-hmm. to do. Go and ahead. then with uh, your hardcore players like myself, I, I want this to be something 
you know, like you have PVP in it, let's let's up the ante. Take off this accept stuff. You know, let me drop all my stuff when I die. I'm okay with that. And a lot of other hardcore players are. It's the thrill of these type of games. It's what's made the genre go so far. Right. And that's that's fine too. Both sides are right. You know, both sides have the wants that they want. And I think why instead of you know like oh we're gonna add in private servers, just do casual and uh hardcore servers first and i think you'll have a better market hmm. oh, let me see because i think that's also a problem with blizzard is they've very much become activision on you know there's just a market there's not so, different demographics it's just a market so how about um maybe different characters then maybe like you got your first you get to one character but then mm-hmm. he's just playing like the normal story like he's kind of by himself in this wasteland, which again, I, I get into this in a minute. But um, but then yeah, well, to... like a role playing option. Yeah. So something to where like you have kind of your own story coming out while at the same time other people could have that same story and it not seem weird. Right. And then, I think that then would then work really well. A whole different character in your hardcore mode, mm-hmm. as you say, that uh same story. Well, you, yeah. you can you you can even take the story mode off in the hardcore mode. Where you can just have a yeah. bunch of side stories uh, that gives you, in in turn of no story, be side story that give you more stuff so you can build more faster. Yeah, and give you more guns to fight. Because that would also people. make building a lot more fun. Because you know, making like trap houses and uh, you know, having like a turret perimeter stuff like that. Because it's like ah, uh, you know, if they come by me. They'll get what's coming, but they also have mini nukes. So it's like if they get that, you know, it's an interesting fight. It's not like Rust where it's just bullets. You have right. mini nukes, missiles, weird grenades. Robots are going to come out of nowhere. Right. It's not fair. It could be a scorch beast because someone decided to nuke the area right next to you. I do kind of want to get a get a uh, hit those nukes though one time. And I feel like for a hardcore experience with the nukes, they would be extremely rewarding. Because right. as I stand now, it's like, well, if I die, well, do do you lose a nuke pass if you die? Is my question. Hmm. I think if you get killed by a nuke, you can't turn the game on for two days. <laughs> oh God! No, I heard about the the server that did the three nukes at once completely broke everything. Really? Somebody did it. Oh yeah, it it was beautiful. Ah, uh, blah blah blah. blah. Okay, none of these are just telling me if that's not. No, it, it really it does not look like you drop them. So you don't drop them on death. You just have them. Huh. Why does it matter? Well, I still have plenty. I have plenty of game to play because I've been yeah. taking it really slow, doing the side missions, trying to figure out stuff uh, like the. Like, I'm, I'm really hoping it's gonna come out well. It's Bethesda. I'm just worried, like, I'm worried on the form of they're getting very heavy-handed in the creation club with the other games. Yeah. Like, and I, I don't mean that in the form of, like, how much content, but, like, just, for me, I'm, I'm a very hardcore modder, and what I mean heavy-handed is they update the game constantly for this creation club stuff instead, because they're integrating it directly into their game versus just creating an external file that attaches, like, an ESP, and it just, it's very, very, very annoying. Hmm. Like... If modders can get their stuff to work without having to patch the game, then that's still let's a step up. <laughs> it's also passion, man. Uh, but hey, um, as we're hitting that, we're past an hour now, so um, hopefully uh, I get started on video games. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so hopefully this thing actually saves it, and, and if we got a good episode, man. It was good having you back. It's good being back. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, especially uh. <laughs> Well, I might have you on again, like in a few weeks, so if you're if, right. you're, if you're able to, because uh, I'm trying to do more, have more people, have more guests on the show. So, cool. yeah, if we could do an update on how um um how the game's going, and uh, you said you got a four. Uh, PS4. Yeah. No, not yet. I want to get one. I'm probably gonna try and get one for my birthday. Okay. Treat myself. Okay. Oh shit, man. Uh. I'll keep uh, catch up back with you. Thanks for coming back on the show, man. I, I know everybody loves you, man. So yeah, man. Uh, oh. that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, fo- follow me on uh Instagram on uh shit. What the fuck is my name now? Is this yes? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's still cousin broken. 
Um, I'm on TikTok too. <laughs> don't don't follow me on there. <laughs> it's just stupid. Um, uh, you got your your Instagrams, your Twitters. You want to shoot out? Uh, I got Twitter at hips hey. Just hit me up on there. I'm getting back to posting stuff, mostly cats. Okay, cool. All right, man. It was episode fifty. Uh, thanks for listening. Peace.